G'day, I'm Dr Mike. When I'm not hanging out with Jake and Olivia at All About Animals, I'm working at Vet Products Direct. It's an online shop with thousands of discounted pet care products, and you can talk to vets and vet nurses who care about your pet as much as you do. Use promotion code ANIMALS to receive 5% off your order, plus free postage anywhere in Australia. I'll see you at vetproductsdirect.com.au, and enjoy the show. This program is proudly brought to you by Vet Products Direct, Holistic Select, and The Walmart Company. Welcome to another episode of All About Animals. I'm Olivia and this is Jake and we're here at Canala in the Clare Valley. On today's show, Olivia has a go at show jumping with her horse. And then we learn about how to look after your older pets. After the show, make sure you go to our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So sit back and enjoy watching another exciting episode of All, All About, About Animals. the Royal Adelaide Show. This time we're checking out the cow judging. So girls, what do you love most about entering your cows into the shows? It's lots of fun and you have a good time. Yeah, and what sort of preparation do you need to do before you enter your cow? You need to clip them and brush them, wash them, do their top line. So what is top line? The top line is the hair that runs along from its head or its shoulder to its tail. Okay, and you have to trim it off? Yep, you use the clippers and you run along their back. It just makes their back look straighter and not as bony when it's brushed down. Okay, and do they need to be milked before they go on show? Um, we don't, we milk them at, on the night before yep. and then in the morning and stuff we feed them a lot and make their udders fill up more. Oh, well that's great. Well, good luck with the shows. Thank you. Now it's time for the girls to bring their cows into the ring to be judged. I had no idea that so many people showed their cattle like this. I reckon the judge will have a hard time picking a winner. Well, I can understand the judges having a hard time picking a winner, because I certainly can't tell the difference. But being dairy cows, if it was up to me, I'd prefer to judge them on how good a chalky milk they make. Chocolate milk. Yum. Now we're going to have a look at one of my favourite disciplines, show jumping. My horse Kai hadn't done jumping when I first got him, so he used to run off at all the jumps. Luckily, Black Hill Pony Club taught me how to jump him. So Cathy, what's your role as the president at Black Hill Pony Club? My role as the president would be to co coordinate all the committee meetings, and we have the committee meetings once a month to coordinate rallies and to see where we're going in the future. Okay. The club. I heard that Black Hill lost their grounds recently. What happened? Yes, we, um, we've we been um, basically homeless for the last 12 months now. We Two years ago we were given our notice at uh, the site that we were at, having um, renovated it from a tip to um, an, a very aesthetically pleasing um, land mass, um, so much so that the government actually wanted the land back and they will be now using it to develop and build on. But unfortunately we were given no compensation to leave so we're um, homeless at the moment but we're still looking. We've had a lot of public support and um, even though we've sort of taken a back seat over the last 12 months we're hoping to band um, together and look for a new home because our um, uh, membership is ever increasing so we realistically need our, uh, our own land now to call our home rather than um, rely on the goodwill of people's private properties. Yeah. 
So what do I need to work on in my jumping? There's always uh, three things to remember with show jumping. You need to have a lovely rhythm, you need to get a nice line and you need to look up. So a lot of people tend to look into the jumps and the horses tend to look in too because they like to look where you're looking. So if you look up and around and beyond your jumps, they look up and around and do the jumps for you. So you need to be confident because they feed off your confident legs and um, essentially ride each jump um, as if they're not going to, uh, as if they're going to do it, and then they'll do it for you. And always have a smile on your face. And at Black Hill, we always congratulate each other, and that improves everybody's confidence with trying it again. Okay. And don't be disheartened if you don't do it first time because you'll get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy, are ready to give show jumping a go now? Excellent. Let's go for it. Okay. Don't look up. Don't look at the jump. They can do all that. Well done. Give him a pat. Good boy. I think I really improved once I trusted my horse and used my legs as we approached the jump. I was probably a bit nervous at the start, but now I love it and we've jumped some clear rounds of competitions. He can jump and now that I know that, I'll just keep working on it with him. Legs, 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 legs. Good girl. Beautiful. Look up, look up. Don't look at those jolly jumps. Well done. Big pat. Today, we're back at Power Hills Vet Clinic to learn about pensioner pets with Dr. Mike. So today, Dr. Mike, we wanted to know more about senior pets, and today we have Tammy, who is a senior pet. Yeah, she certainly is, and I, I tell you what, she's a fantastic example of an older dog, and I, I hope I'm looking as good as she does when I'm that age. <laughs> <laughs> so when is a pet a senior pet? You know, it's a fact of life that our pets actually age much faster than we do. So the rule of thumb is that one human year is equivalent to seven dog years. Wow. So that means by the time they're seven years old, they're, they're kind of close to 50 years old yeah. in, in human life, which definitely means they can get their senior card. Yeah. So they're probably almost pensioners by the time they're seven years of age. What special care do they need? Yeah, by that stage, there are three critical things that uh, dogs like Tammy's going to need. Number one, as they get older, everything starts to slow down. Their metabolism starts to slow down. They don't exercise as much, so it's really easy to put on weight. In Tammy's situation here, she's fantastic. I can still feel her ribs, waists there, and there's no fat at the base of her tail. So her owner's doing really well in terms of weight control. That's also going to help with the second issue, which is all about joint management. They just get old and stiff and get arthritis, so we need to look after them in that area. Third thing is they just can't fight off infection like they used to. So they need a really good diet that's going to give them good immune support. They just can't fight off infections like they could when they were young. Okay. So what should we be feeding an older pet? You know, I think that in this area it's absolutely critical to use a diet that's specially designed for senior pets. It's great that WellPet make a range like Holistic Select, specifically designed for older pets. And it addresses the three key areas that we've just talked about helps with their weight control because it's got 30% fewer calories than like a typical oh, wow. adult diet. Yeah. It's also got prebiotics and probiotics. They sound pretty good for you, don't they? Yeah, yeah. definitely. And what they do is stimulate the immune system. You know, the thought is that basically the immunity comes from the inside out. So by feeding a better diet, we're actually supporting them in three key ways. Can feeding our pets better actually make them live longer? That's a tricky question, but I think amazingly yes. Basically, as they get into their older years, like when you think, think about their senior years, it's when they need the most support. And I think yeah. a premium food like this is going to really help just support them through those difficult years. Oh, well, that's great. Thanks, Dr. Mark. And thanks, Tammy. Yes. <laughs> thanks, Tam. Thanks, Tam. <laughs> Okay, now Barky is a major problem we have with Candy. She barks at any noise, cats, birds, and drives everyone crazy. So I'm keen to hear what George thinks and how he can help with this. Jake, today I want to work with her uh, excessive barking. Yeah. Apparently having some problems with her barking Certainly a lot. Certainly are. <laughs> yeah, out there. Now she's barking a lot at the other dogs and also barking at the dog across the 
other side in the yeah, corner. Yeah, just across, yeah. Um, so this dog's an anxious dog. She's got a, a charge of anxiety in her stomach that is released by barking. That makes her feel good to release this anxiety. Okay. Uh, the two things I would uh, recommend here is to persist with the training, the psychological, uh, emotional and physical challenges we've set up for her. They will start to relax this dog, calm a dog, which will create less barking, less anxiety, like we have now. But I'd also like to try some sort of bark control for her. It's a long way out for you to go out there at the moment and stop her from barking. So our options would be a sonic device, which activates a, a high-pitched noise that quite often will stop them barking. I don't think that's going to work in her case. She's too <laughs> strong-minded, um, and it only will do a little area of about 10 metres. Okay. The other option, I think, is the more viable one here is to put a citronella collar on her. How does a citronella collar work? What it does, Jake, it, um, it's a collar that goes around her neck. There's a box that sits under her throat, and every time she barks, it activates a spray of citronella scented water. Okay. Uh, which hopefully will make her stop barking. All right, okay. So every time she barks, it's going to send a spray, which will stop her barking. So if you have the collar to stop her from barking at other dogs and disturbing neighbours, uh, what if you want her to bark as a guard dog? That's a great question, um, Jake. Yeah. We get asked that a lot. We, at this stage, she's over barking. That will stop her barking almost completely, but it will not stop her when the impulse is too strong on the, or whatever happens is very strong yeah. trigger for her, she'll, she'll bark through that. Okay. Okay. But uh, right now it doesn't matter that we maybe stop her barking completely, it'll come back. Yeah. We want to start reprogramming her not to bark at everything. Okay. So telling her to take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. <laughs> okay. So we'll give that a try. And see All right. That sounds good. Oh, the citronella collar was amazing. It instantly stopped her barking and made things much more peaceful at home. Just feel the serenity. Try George's tips for yourself. Excessive or obsessive barking usually indicates underlying boredom or anxiety. Bark collars only stop the symptoms, not the underlying cause. Consult a behaviourist for the best approach for your dog and ensure your dog is getting adequate exercise and stimulation. Please visit sitdropstay.com.au for more information. Now that the fabric's finished, how do we make clothing? Well, the first thing we need is to have a design. So um, if we're making just a, a basic t-shirt out of a, a piece of jersey fabric, we need to know what design of t-shirt we want. So usually a designer will come up with a sketch of a garment and they'll choose the different colours of fabric they want to be made from that and then that will be turned into technical information. So the first thing we need is a technical brief of the garment, all the different component parts, um, what sort of labels and buttons and zips might need to go to uh, assemble the fabric, what type of stitching is used to put it together, what colour of stitching and type of thread. So all the technical specifications of the garment and we also need to de develop a pattern so that we can cut out the various components of the garment into their different pieces and then sew them together. So after we've done that and we've got those specifications, the fabric will go off to a garment factory and the first thing they need to do is cut all the fabric. So they'll lay all the patterns out and uh, pull the fabric out onto a table, many, 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 many sheets because they make a lot of garments at once. And they cut out all the different panels of the T-shirt that you're making from that fabric and then those panels will be taken off to the sewing lines where they assemble them together. So there'll be many, many, many sewing machines at, a, at an average factory that you use to make these garments and people will sit there and sew the garments together based on the technical specifications they've been given. And equally at that time, if there's a, a print that what might need to go onto the um, T-shirt, then that panel uh, the front panel of the t-shirt will be sent off to be printed first and after all those things are done we make the garment and it goes off to be finished and the finishing of a garment is basically just um, you know probably steaming it with a light iron and then folding it very nicely and putting it in its packaging and that then goes off to maybe a distribution warehouse for the company that's going to sell it 
and from there it'll go and get put in the stores and you'll walk into the shop and see it sitting there and um, on the shelf for sale. All right. Cool. There's a lot of processes have to go, it has to go through. It's yeah. a very long process. And so maybe, you know, to give you an idea, from the greasy wool that we saw to a finished garment in the store, the whole process probably takes about nine months. Wow. So from us getting a greasy bale of wool to scour it, card it, comb it, spin it, all the shipping times between the different processes, um, then the knitting, dyeing, finishing, um, the fabric going off to be made um, and sewn into a finished garment and then being shipped and to be in the stores on the shelves is probably at least nine months. Oh, wow, wow. It's a long time. Long time. <laughs> it is. For more information, go to merino.com. <laughs> hey guys, I've got today's joke for you. Oh, okay, tell, tell us. us. What do you call a sheep with no legs? Don't know. I don't know. A cloud. A cloud. <laughs> That's pretty funny, but what are you doing wearing my jacket? <laughs> At first glance, Serendipity Farm in Queensland looks like any other small farm. But most of the animals there haven't had the best start in life. Serendipity rescues animals that are injured, have outgrown their families, or are too expensive to keep. They became a refuge because so many animals were rejected by farms. There's always a home available to any abandoned or neglected animals at Serendipity. So Abby, how long ago did you start the farm? We've been open as a livestock rescue for about eight years, but we've been open as a children's farm for about five months. So how old are these super cute chicks? They're about a week or two old. They came from the penny, penny hatching system that goes through the schools. Oh, well, that's great. Well, there's plenty of stuff to check out, so we might do that. Absolutely. So what do you think to Chucky Moo Moo? Oh, he's so cute. cute. He's gorgeous, isn't he? So how old is he? He's about five months old. He was born around Christmas. He was actually, oh. his mummy died and we was left in the paddock for about a week before we got him. Oh. So where, where was he found? He was local. Uh, somebody told us about him, so we went to fetch him. So Abby, what breed is he? He's an Angus cross. Okay, so does that mean he grows uh, horns? Well, we're unsure because we don't know what the cross is. Okay. So what happens from here? I think he'll stay. Everybody <laughs> loves him. <laughs> he's very, very, very cute. He's lovely. He's actually a little too old for a bottle, but he's our baby. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry they stayed this small forever. That's right. <laughs> Families travel from all over to visit the beautiful animals and support this great not-for-profit organisation. So Abby, who are these? This is Cooper and this is Miss Piggy Pig. And what's their stories? Cooper's been raised by us from a bottle from about a week old when her mother yeah. rejected her. Aww. And Miss Piggy Piggy was found on the side of a road as a newborn baby. Her parents had both been killed by a truck, it looked like. Aww. And the family that raised her for four months um, decided they had to let her go. So they took her into the forestry and left her there with loads of food, knowing there was wild pigs in the area. Yeah. But four days later, they went back just to check that she'd left, and Miss Piggy Pig came running out of the forestry 100 miles an hour and jumped into the car. Aww, so then so she, sweet. So then she came to us. So how old are they? Miss Piggy Pig is about four months, and Cooper's about six months old. Okay. So are they fully grown, or do they still have a while to go? We're not sure about the feral pig, because it was a feral pig. We're not sure of the, the sizing, but Cooper's probably about half grown by now. But pigs don't actually stop growing until they're four years old. Oh, really? So he could be quite big. Wow. So what happens from here? Well, I think that everybody loves these two, so they'll, these two will be staying as well. <laughs> oh, that's great. It looks like they're getting very well. They are yeah. lovely, yeah. Everybody loves these two. So, Abby, what happened to Africa? Africa in his prime was actually a racehorse, and then he was no good on the track, so he was actually shot. And he actually escaped, but we don't know how, and he ended up at the Doggers, and we rescued him from the Doggers about eight years ago. Okay. Wow, so where, where did the bullet go? Right in his head. So it went in there. D did it come out the other side? Haven't got a clue. That's part of the story that's missing. We have no idea. Wow. Mm. So there's a good chance it might still be in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It's actually just their sinuses at their front. Their brain's a lot further back. So. Oh. That's it's, good. It's very lucky. Yeah, he's a lovely boy. So how old is he? Um, I think he's about 12 now. He's been with us for eight years. OK. Is he going to stay? Is he going to stay here? Absolutely. He's one of our originals. Oh, <laughs> that's good. What a great place this is. 
So next time you're in Queensland, make sure you visit Serendipity Farm. It's a great day out for the whole family. There's lots of animals so everyone can have a pat and give them a good feed. For more information about how to support this great animal rescue centre, just go to serendipityfarms.org.au. The orphan animals will love you for it. So for your chance to win a year's supply of holistic slate pet food, go to allaboutanimals.tv and enter the competition. Viewer Pets is brought to you by Parahills Vet Clinic. Yes, it's that time again, viewers pets. I get lots and lots of great photos of your pets emailed in and I love looking through them all. I've picked out a few to share with you, so let's take a look. Our first viewer pet has been sent in by Carolyn from St Mary's, South Australia. Her pet dog Mickey is an eight-year-old Pomeranian. He's very cuddly and loves to lay on Carolyn's bed during the day to look out the window. Mickey is a cheeky boy and loves to sneak under the fence to visit his favourite neighbour. He loves to play with Carolyn's other dog, Bundy, and is a great guard dog. Our next viewer pet has been sent in by Costa, Andrew and Alexander from Lower Mitcham, South Australia. This is one-year-old Dusty. Dusty scratches on the boy's back door to let them know she's hungry. She loves chasing them around when they are on their scooters. Dusty has fantastic high jumping skills. Sometimes she has naps on Costa, Andrew and Alexander's laps. Our last but not least viewer pet for this week has been sent to my Carly who is 10 from Queensland and her guinea pig called Stripes. Stripes loves to play tug of war with grass blades. He loves to be washed and brushed. Stripes squeaks for Carly when she comes home from school. His favourite foods are parsley and tomatoes. So to have your pet on our show, just email info at allaboutanimals.tv with three photos of you and your pet, five things about your pet and your name, age, suburb and state. And don't forget to enter our awesome competitions. Go to www.allaboutanimals.tv. When we went to the Gold Coast, we watched the amazing Australian Outback Spectacular. We were lucky enough to go backstage and chat to some of the cast of the show. So, Jordana, you're one of the leading performers of the show. Well, yeah. What, what's your role? Well, Jake, I've been here for about six years and I play Kate, who is the um, station's owner, owner's daughter. Um, she is one of the sort of best riders on the station and she actually has a bit of a love interest, who is Jim. Yep. And um, Kate and Jim compete quite a bit as to uh, who is the better rider. So I get to have a little bit of fun out there, which is great. Yeah, and uh, who's this? This is Digger. Digger is one of our um, border collies that we have here. We've got a few dogs, but basically Digger's role is to um, hang out out the front in our bar pre-show and Digger takes photos with um, everyone who comes in. So he's very good. He has a few tricks up his sleeve that he does out the front and he's yeah. a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And what's your favourite thing about the show? Uh, well, I think it's just wonderful that I get to um, be in a workplace where I can ride horses and have fun. I do a bit of trick riding as well, so I get to hang upside down off galloping horses, which yeah. is a bit of an adrenaline rush. Um, but, I mean, really, it's the best job in the world. Where do you get to play and um, have fun in your workplace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good luck out there. Break a leg. Not Thank literally. <laughs> I'll see you out there. Thanks, Jake. So, Brad, what's your role in the show? I actually play Tommy Woodcock in the show. So what's your favourite part of the show? Uh, probably the Liberty routine. I love doing it. I uh, love interacting with the horses. Um, it's in one of our far lap scenes. There's also in another scene and it pretty much is an interaction with the horse uh, with no aids. It's all, all about the horse expressing himself to you and, and out there in the sand and you're, you're both working as one. And yeah, that'd have to be my favourite part of the show really. So who's this, Brad? This is Echo. He's actually one of our Farlap horses in the show. Oh, wow. Um, so he'll get all dressed up tonight and makeup put on him, and just like all the actors do, and, and uh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be on standby ready to go for the show tonight. Well, then he's a superstar. He is a bit of a superstar, that's right. So how many times is the show in a week? We do five shows a week, uh, Tuesday through to Saturday, and, um, yeah, there's a fair bit of training involved, and and uh, the cast members turn up here at 3.45 in the afternoon and, and we roll through from there. So it's, yeah, five days a week. So how long do you spend training with the horses? Um, depends on what, what uh, we need to train on of an afternoon. Um, and we just pick scene by scene and, and just practice it and, and try and do something different each afternoon when we come in. Well, good luck. Can't wait to see you out there. No worries. I hope you enjoyed the show. I will. Good luck, OK. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for you to visit our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. 
And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So, see you next time. around the globe are wrapping themselves into the record books. The Woolmark Company presents the world's longest social scarf. Join us at raptinmarino.com.